divinized form, I arrived at the Godhead through my aestheticism. I, I, I forego much of uh, existence, right? So much so that on its most extreme case, like here on the most extreme case, we can talk about necrophagia, or we can talk about um, the, the consumption of feces as an act of um, devotation, if you will. On the other hand, I recognize just the opposite, right? I'm not, you know, if, if, if food is the sustenance of life, and that attachment to food is the last attachment that I need to forego, then I'm going to forego food, I'm going to forego water, not in an attempt um, of suicide, but in a, in a well-thought-out, well-strategized attempt to reach final enlightenment, right? Because then I divorce myself in my death. I divorce myself from myself, right? But I don't embrace death. I recognize that death is inherently within us, right? This, in this move, I sort of move toward death. In this move, remember, death, death the one, is that which is both external and internal at the same time. It's not this sort of cookie cutter example. In this example, I recognize that death is already inside of me, right? Death is right here. So what I do is I, I allow death to externalize itself. Since death is, I, um, as Heidegger says, since we're being towards death, and death inheres within my existence, then I recognize that all of my attempts my attachments to the world is an attempt to suppress that which is inherently within me and then I just allow it to be, right? So I've done a video series on euthanasia um, and there are various forms of euthanasia but allowing to die, you'll hear this, right? Allowing to die because that death, is, it sits in you there ready and eating is an attempt to pacify death, right? So I eat and I drink water because I want to pacify death. Well, if I don't want to pacify death anymore and I want to allow that thing to manifest within me, I want it to externalize itself. I just stop eating. Right? I just stop eating. So at its most extreme case, I'll starve myself or, or, or dehydrate myself to the point of death, not in an act of suicide, but in an act of ultimate enlightenment. Right? Again, both really, really extreme uh, instances. You can't, these two polemic aspects of occultist practice, it's almost impossible for practitioners at that level to function in a social setting. You're either going to end up, you know, being a sociopath and locked up or killed, um, or you're going to you're going to end up starving and killing yourself, right? Um, not so much the the killing yourself properly speaking, but probably more starving yourself um, or dehydrating yourself in an act of um, devotion. Usually, what ends up happening is you have varying degrees of that, right? You don't have to be an occultist to understand a bit of aestheticism as an academic. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm not as creative as I used to be, right? I would say creativity more on this branch um, and more sort of systematic, systematized processes on this branch, right? You, I, I, forego, uh, I forego friendships. There are no friends that I have. Um, this is what I do, right? I'm spending time with my wife, I'm spending time with my kids, or I'm in the library researching, shooting videos, giving it to you, right? So in a sense, I've, I've had to relinquish attachments in order to arrive at, a, I wouldn't go so far as saying enlightenment, but a better understanding, and definitely a more holistic understanding, because I haven't sort of been a niche-specific researcher. I want a very global approach. But in order to gain that understanding, that global approach, I, I can't be attached to stuff, right? There's no time for TV, there's no time for, I did a video on this, but I think it was the, was it the grind? Uh, it was something, I did something in hip-hop. And I remember saying, it's no time for none of that, right? It's, there's no time for anything, right? Other than what it is that I'm intoxicated doing. And I'm, I am intoxicated in this system, this process of arriving at more knowledge, right? I want more. I want to understand more. Because the more I understand, the more I see how it connects, and so on, and blah, 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 blah. So, again, is it the case that we're saying that um, LHP, RHP, occultists are going as extreme in either direction? No. These two polemic halves can't really function in society. You're not going to find many people who exist at those extremes, right? Those are the oddities, right? But those extremes identify the, the, um, the range of the scope. It sets the boundary conditions for the scope. You can practice um, a cult to the point that you really recognize the darkness in 
and the dark force, if you will, in the world, and that the Godhead is, or an aspect of the Godhead is a destroyer, right? Um, it, 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 is, it, is, it is sort of, like they say, like if you're into astrology and stuff, Saturn, right? Saturn is the, the destructive element, the destructive force, right? So if you're embracing that, then you might align yourself with, with, with more destructive forces, right? And it's not to say that it's just destructive, right? It gets to that extreme, but I arrive at these destructive forces, in its most extreme case, by embracing atta my attachment to the world. I can't destroy something. I can't properly said, be said to break something unless I recognize that there is an external world and I am attached to that external world. If I embrace aestheticism, then there could be something that could be destroyed there, but I, I'd, rather just, I'd rather just not, right? I'd, I'd prefer not to. This is sort of like Bartleby the scriber, Scrivener, right? I, 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 I sort of see my position in the world and I stay here and I really, at its, at, its, at its most baseline, I just want to, I want to become immobilized, right? This is straight robot mode. I, I'm no longer, you know, I, I lose who I am on either poles. But here's more creativity, creativity, maybe a bit of perversion, real perversion. Okay, like, you know, sociopath, right? Um, all for the process of attaining liberation. And there's tons of quotes that I've given you. This is not me saying it. You can, you know, this is pre, I've, I've uh, reinforced the, the lecture uh, substantially with, with citation. And this part, uh, half, you know, here you might have someone who, the, an, an RHP, white light practitioner, that um, has friends, but the friends that they have is a small circle of people who believe like they do. So maybe um, there are various forms of, uh, I'm not sure if Wiccan is necessarily, I, I would imagine that Wiccan can probably RHP, right? So maybe a small group of uh, Wiccan community members or a small group of pagans might get together, you know, every week and talk about stuff, okay? But then there might be a deeper practitioner that recognizes that, well, my attachment to that group is, uh, is not allowing me to do what I need to do. Well, my attachment to my friends isn't allowing me to do. Well, my attack and then slow myself, right? You can, so the, hence the progression, right? So, um, as I said, this is, this is, uh, this is the totality of, uh, of RHP, LHP. Um, there's tons more that can be discussed, but I can't get in, I, you know, I can't go into everything. I just wanted to, you know, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of conspiracy theory stuff out there on the occult. Um, the last thing is the example, and I, I forgot to get the citation, but to show you um, that it's not always just, you know, hunky-dory, happy-go-lucky on this end, right? Clearly it's bad, we say it's bad, but it's not, right? Um, it's not always happy-go-lucky on this end. There's this scene, oh my goodness, Apocalypse Now. Um, there's a scene in Apocalypse Now, and I really do want to get, and I might, by the time this video is finally uploaded, if I remember, find the citation where um, Brando is in the dark, right? He, so he's sort of split. His face, half of his face is in the complete shadow. The other half of his face is lit, right? And, and he says he, he went to a village or something along these lines. He went to the village, and I really need to find this passage. But he went to the village and he re recognized that um, U.S. forces had gone in and inoculated the children. Let's say in their left arm. So he, they, they inoculated the children um, with a vaccine. And the, the men in the village, the leaders of the village, looked at it as such a Western imposition on their local community that they took out the machetes and they chopped off the arms of every single child who had been inoculated. So if you were inoculated, your arm was getting chopped off, and they did it without thinking. They didn't consider the pain or, or the horror, the horror, the horror of the act, and this is what he says in the scene, the horror, the horror, and they just went off lopping off the kid's arms. And he says something like, he comes there and he sees a pile, a pile of young dismembered arms and he thought the pure genius of the act. Really, really dark. Really, really dark. You might say, oh, that's LHP, that's LHP, but it's not, right? Practically speaking, if you're to force it in the context of uh, an occultist discourse, it's not necessarily. It would be more RHP, right? Because I am attached to my arm. I am attached to my arm. And for me to forego that attachment, or for someone to say, listen, you need to forego that attachment to your arm, 
in order to attain enlightenment, the reason why the act was done